Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to go over one month of progress for my FPS tower defense game, where you will be the guardian of a hangar inside a large ship tasked with defending it from an onslaught of enemy drones. And you'll even be armed with guns and the ability to place down defensive towers like turrets and rocket launchers. Now, if the idea of this game interests you, please subscribe and ring that bell to follow along with its development. So I wanted to pick a project that I would be excited to work on and that would be a vehicle to help me improve my development consistency and art skills B because I've had problems with those two things in the past. And, and let's, let's bring it in real, let's, let's bring it in real close here, boys. Let's bring it in real close. And no one else, just, just me and you. I don't have art skills. As you go along and see the more of this video, we're talking about cubes. We're talking about cubes and no textures. So I started having a call with some of my friends every week on Discord where I would talk to them about the progress of my game and also what I'm going to try to accomplish in the next week. I pull up my task and go through each one. And this has really given me some accountability, which is totally helping with the whole consistency thing because... I don't want to show up to that call on Thursday without anything to show. Now, knowing that I haven't done a large 3D project in Godot before, I decided to grab Mrs.'s tutorial on making an FPS in Godot. And I followed it for the base of my game. So far, it's turned out to be a great choice, and I could definitely recommend the course. Link in the description. After getting the base of the game down, I jumped into Blender to start modeling a placeholder corridor that will connect the hangar to the last gate protecting your ship's engine room. So yeah, pretty important. If you fail defending this, ship blows up, game over. But, what is a base defense game without some enemies? So I modeled a heavily placeholder enemy, the most terrifying yet in the game. A bomber drone. Pretty simple. It's it's literally just four cubes. But let, let's not get ourselves. We, have, we, haven't re we haven't reached the point of making art yet. M maybe they'll come next month. So I ran into a problem with that tunnel model where the lighting was stretching weirdly over the center half of it. And I didn't understand what was going on. So I called up Thomas and he showed me that I had this end gone. And he also told me how to fix it. And in case you guys run into the same problem, all I had to do was select all the faces, then convert them to tries, then back to quads. And Blender actually uh, just fixed it, which was super cool. Now, moving back over to programming, I wanted those bomber drones to kind of hunt in packs and move into the hangar and through the tunnel and just kind of attack in just like a big wave. I thought the best logic to use would be a simple Boyd system at least starting out. We may make it a little more complicated later, but for now that's good enough. So I took some lessons that I had from college still, and I converted this 2D Boyd system uh, to 3D and with C sharp. And it, it went perfectly the first time. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's just ignore the drones sticking together and floating off into the void. It's fine. It's fine. No, no. So, uh, so after a little bit of tweaking, we got that behavior fixed. And we got them moving a little bit quicker and uh, given this cool rotation. Which I'm not sure I want. I, I need to polish it up. I also want to work on performance. But it's good enough for now. Comment below if you'd be interested about a 3D Boyd's tutorial using Godot. So I continued with programming and took a week to work on my bullet physics. And I wanted to change it from the single raycast system that I have got from the tutorial to a dynamic bullet system where we would have a graphical bullet and it would send out a raycast to where it would be next, and then we would move it to there, and then it would send out a raycast to where it would be next and move it to there, on and on. And by using that system, we get the benefits of 
the accuracy of ray casting where we could have fast bullets, but we could also have bullet time. So there's a, there's actually a time that it takes the bullet to get to the target. And we could also add some bullet drop, which I, uh, I like both these things, especially since I want to add a sniper rifle to the game. And I ended up making a tutorial about uh, this feature. So if you would like to check it out, hey, link in the description. That brings us to where I am now with the project, and I can't wait to keep on working on it. So thanks for watching, and please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more Godot tutorials, game jams, and devlogs. See you guys next time.